Hello everyone, my name is Leo and as I received a lot of requests about how I compose my music, with this series of videos I would like to share the tricks I use the most while creating music. We will start with a little and very short demo song that I think is a good example of how I use modes, how I think at the fourth chord and how I rely on a cadence to force some chord changes. And then I will explain everything, just after the song. I'm pretty excited about this video. Let's start! The song starts in D, actually with the free D string and a D in the G string, which obviously provide a strong connotation of a D major key. Then I'm making a D major scale, confirming that the initial D was a D major 7, and then I play a G major 7 which is obviously the fourth degree of a D major scale. So we have for sure established that the key is D major. And now that we have clearly established the key, the tonality, it's time to introduce some movements. I still play a D major scale, a descending one, and then I play basically a D Lydian, I mean D, D with the, in, the, in the free string, D in the G string, A flat that resolves to A. This is the first, I would say, strange sound. In fact, the expected chord would have probably been any e minor. But I prefer to do. Something a little bit different. Something that really provides a strong Lydian sound, a Lydian color. Of course, when I composed the song, I wasn't thinking, okay, now I want to play a D Lydian, but I was naturally accompanied by my ear, by my instinct to play that A flat, resolving to an A, as I have that Lydian color naturally in my ears. In fact, after many years of practicing modes, I have learned how they sound, more than how to play them on the guitar. This is super important, I mean, when I first approached the modes, I basically have learned their fingering on the guitar neck. You know, the explanation was pretty simple. You play a C major and it is an Ionian mode. Then you start from the D, a Dorian from an E and you have a Frisian and so on and so forth. The problem here is that you learn the fingering but you actually don't learn how the modes sound at all. In fact you have that strong C major scale sound in your ear that you are not able to listen to the different color that each mode introduces. You still think I am in C, I'm just starting from different root notes. Now, I have struggled 
a lot to find a way to understand the true sound of modes. Finally, I ended up with a pretty simple exercise using the free strings of the guitar as root notes, I mean as pedals, that really helped me to insert the mode colors in my mind. Let me share some example. For instance, let's use this free string. start playing, letting your mind think freely, just absorbing these different colors. you can do the same thing also with minor modes, for instance. And so on and so forth. Play these simple sequences, let your Hears open up and little by little those sounds start to become part of you. The more you play, the more those sounds and those colors start to become part of you, become part of your musical instinct. And then when you want to compose a song, those sounds are part of your vocabulary and your musical instinct brings you towards the sound. And this is what happened in the demo song. That Delirian was there, ready to be played. My musical instinct, previously trained, brought that Lydian color to life. So my suggestion is to practice with these little and simple exercises, just taking things easy. and hours. Now let's go back to the demo song. We were here and then the song proceed going to an A. To an E, sorry. G minor. What is this? In D we are in D major, so the fourth chord should be G major. So but I did something different. What is this? Well, we have three ways to explain it. The first is the modal interchange. I mean, if you are for instance in D major, you can borrow chords from the D minor, and the D minor has a fourth chord as a G minor. The second way is uh, the negative harmony, but this is uh, not a topic for this video. And the third way is what in, it in Italy we call cadenza d'inganno. 
Deceptive cadence, something similar in English. Typically you have a two, five, one. The cadenza d'inganno does this. Two, five, six. So here, This is something I do always, I always do these things. When I'm finishing a chord progression, and typically you know, you would do four, five, one, I use this trick. Which resolves marvelously to the first degree of your initial cadence. Once again, you need to hear that specific sound, and actually I use this concept a lot of time. I mean, I've become so used to this sound that I always use it. There is an interesting story here. Actually, typically you learn a concept and then you have to understand how it sounds. But I learned this trick in the opposite way. I mean, I heard a sound and then I tried to find out, to figure out uh, some theoretical explanation. Actually, I hear this sound in one of the most famous Beatles song, which is in my life. This is a wonderful John Lennon song, and here actually we have a good example of uh, this uh, use of the fourth minor chord. Now, let's proceed with the song. We were here. And I do this trick here. So you see, we are supposed to be in D major, but I play a Mixolydian sequence, which provides a beautiful, in my opinion, color to the sound. A little, a little variation that is, in my opinion, wonderful, that adds a lot of color to what I'm doing, in my opinion. Then, minor chord that is the second chord of my D progression, but this time I want a more melancholy sound, because we are near to the conclusion of the song, therefore I play the in sequence, E flat diminished and a C major, which are respectively the 7th degree and the 6th degree of an E minor harmonic scale which is beautiful in my opinion. Once again, we are talking about colors and nuances that in my opinion make all the differences, letting a simple chord progression to become more interesting and with more movements. Now, this E minor, E flat diminished and C major have also a little different cadence. I replicate and uh, with this trick I can resolve now in G major. So we were in D major, also this E three E, e chord could have been uh, in D major, but then making just this cadence. C minor is a pretty histrionic chord. It 
it was the second degree of the D major scale, which is the prominent scale at the beginning of the demo song, but then I used the diminished chord and the major sixth, uh, somehow leaving that uh, E Dorian feeling, moving more towards an E Aeolian mode, and therefore, as an E Aeolian, it could be considered the sixth degree of the final G major chord. And uh, leveraging on the cadence introduced by the E minor, E flat diminished, and C major, I use the same cadence E minor, C7, D7, in order to resolve to the final G major. So here I use a kind of bluesy progression with the 4th, 7th, and the 5th, 7th degree that resolve to the G major. I tried moving from a sad E Aeolian to a final more open G major, which, is, which brings somehow hope and positivity to the song. And uh, I reached that G major with the bluesy C7, D7, which are kind of linking the sadness of the E minor to the new hope that the final G major brings to us. movement. So summarizing, with the help of a demo song, we have checked out together how to provide color and movement to your chord progressions using modes. Then we have heard, we have understood that the fourth degree of your uh, sequence, it can be major and minor, and even if minor, it resolves wonderfully to the first degree. Then we have seen how to leverage on the ambiguity of a chord and on a cadence to gently change tonality and the key of a song, pretty naturally. I would say also using two bluesy chords to better transition from a minor tonality to a major one. The most important takeaway for me is that we need to hear the sounds. Of course, theory and harmony are important to expand our vocabulary. But it is only when you understand and hear actually something that then we can use it musically and creatively in a song. I have tried to share how I have understood modes, I mean how I have learned their color and how they sound. We need patience, we need to relax, open our ears and gently let those sounds to enter in our souls, to become part of our musical instinct. I did it just closing my eyes and practicing for hours. With that little exercise I show you briefly. These sounds become part of us little by little, gently, thanks to our love and passion. Really, it's kind of a spiritual experience. At least for me, surely it is. Isn't it magical when you learn a color, when associate a sound to an emotion, and especially when you want to transmit an emotion and you know how to do it with your music? This is the real power of music in our hands, in our ears and in our hearts. This alone is worth a lifetime spent practicing, understanding and learning the magical power of music. Thank you for watching, please let me know if you want me to do more videos about the composition, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell and see you soon, bye!